watching, you're watching, you're watching. Oh, to me. You're watching, you're watching, you're watching. Oh, to me. You're watching, you're watching, you're watching. Oh, to me. You're watching. Hey, this is Whit Crane from the band Ugly Kid Joe, staring at you live from Hellfest. And oh my lord, you're listening to Loud TV. What? You have uh, released uh, a single yet? Yes, we have. Uh, Ugly Kid Joe has released a new single. It's called That Ain't Living. Living. And uh, it's off an, uh, uh, our brand new album called Rad Wings of Destiny. And that album, Rad Wings of Destiny, Ugly Good Joe, Rad Wings of Destiny will be out October 21st. So it should, it must be a reference to Judas Priest, right? Yes, we love, I mean, Judas Priest is, I love Judas Priest. So Ugly Good Joe has a penchant for, you know, poking a little humor into the universe. The universe needs a little humor. Um, and you know, and also giving, uh, respect to things that we love. So we love Judas Priest. We're from California. We say rad all day long. So rad wings of destiny. Uh, the, the first single is quite uh, hard rock. That's right. Uh, uh, is it still the same for, for the other track? How there's, do you there's, describe? Well, it's hard for me to describe it because I'm so close to it. You know, I, I'm really close to it. But uh, yeah, the first track that ain't living is uh, You know, we live, also we love like old school ACDC. We, I mean, I live for ACDC. So uh, I wrote the riff for That Ain't Living on an on island in Greece. And I, you know, and I, I had the riff. And I, re and I f tried to find my band members, you know? And so we wrote that song and, uh, and you know, it's really homage to you know, Power Age, ACDC, you know, so, yeah, so that's that song, but there's, there's nine other songs, and there's, you know, a lot of different um, frequencies that we're embracing. Rock and roll. So, that ain't living. Yeah. Uh, what about the, the lyrics? Because you, so you wrote this song? Yeah, I wrote it. In Greece. I wrote the riff in Greece. We worked on the song as a band in Mallorca, Spain. Uh, we tracked the song in El Paso, Texas, and then we couldn't finish all the vocals in El Paso. So then I found myself living in Lisbon, Portugal, and I flew to London to meet the producer, and I tracked the vocals in London. Uh, what about the yeah the topics you wanted to talk about on this job? Well, that ain't living is just you know, like you know, if you feel stuck in a nine to five rut, stop. You know, embrace life. Like look, look around us right now. We're at Hellfest, and this is what this is that life force that we're talking about. Um, we cover a version of the Kinks' Lola, which is really cool. We did great on it. Um, but I'll, I'll let the uh, the thematic structure of the album. I'll let that remain a mystery for someone to figure out themselves. I think if I project what I think it is, sometimes that takes away from somebody feeling what it is for them. And the, the, statue, uh, the statue of Liberty is again yes. the, the artwork. It's like a yeah, kind of wink uh, reference also to your uh, to the, the, the album that I was listening as a teenager. Yeah, yeah, yeah America's Least Wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, um, we have a great artist. His name's Daniel Mercer. And we have a lot of ideas because we're artists. And he was like, let me just do what I want to do. And we're like, okay. And then he came back with, and we were like, oh, it's perfect. So now it has two, two hands saying the magic thing. You're talking about uh, your producer in London, right? Yeah, yeah, Mark uh, Dodson. Mark Dodson, who is an incredible producer and my dear friend, right? He produced America's Least Wanted. So he is, you know, he's a big time dude. So when we were doing this album, I sat with my guys and I said, we should get Mark Dotson again. And they said, that's a good idea. So it was uh, like a full circle to make the album. And um, it sounds like that. How did you feel today at Hellfest? Uh, Great. 
I couldn't see the show because of the whole the interviews. Yeah. I got tremendous reviews. Oh yeah. From the show, they said yeah, it was crazy. It was uh, it's party, you know. Yeah, it was a party. Um, well, it was a full room. There's people there. Beautiful weather. The pandemic is almost done, and so there was a you know a positive energy, rock and roll energy, you know, and uh, that's you know that's what we are. We're a rock band. We throw out positive energy and fat riffs, right? So the show was incredible. The crowd was great. Um, the band played well, and uh, it was awesome. Did you feel negative? energy through the pandemic, you know? The I did, and so I, d I was in uh, Northern California, and I think everybody, wherever they were, probably felt a great divide, which I did, and I'm really, you know, I'm sensitive. So what my move was is I went to Costa Rica. So I, I, I was like, I'm gonna leave. The second that I could get on a plane and, and fly away, I did. And so I went to Costa Rica and I spent a lot of time in a, in a town called uh, Manuel Antonio and a town called Santa Teresa, where I have friends. I, I, I've been going there on and off for, you know, 10, 10 years. So I went there and I was like, wow, the world, because the world stopped for everybody. And, uh, you know, I, I just worked on myself and I wrote a lot of songs. I wrote a movie. And, um, that was my response. I went to Costa Rica. Tell us about your movie. Actually. Well, What's the, the movie is, is it's about, I, wrote, I wrote the movie with, well, I wrote the treatment with Alan Roberts. He plays bass in Life Agony. He's my dear friend. So I, I sat there spacing out in Costa Rica and I started thinking about synesthesia. Do you know what synesthesia is? Okay, synesthesia is, is it's, it's, a, it's, it's an actual thing that befalls various people and the people that it befalls, when they hear music, when they hear piano or a riff or whatever, they see colors, right? And there's, I, I suppose there's, uh, it's on a spectrum. So I won't go too far into it, but it's about a very special girl named Keisha that lives in New Orleans. She's a piano player, virtuoso. And uh, it, it, it's her story of not knowing she had synesthesia, finding out she has synesthesia, and then taking that, she felt she feels quite uncomfortable with the fact that no one else has that. But by the end of, 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 of the film, it'll be an animated film, she will find out that it's just a superpower, you know? When will you release it? It's, getting, it's, it's, it's moving slowly but surely now. So I would think it's not, it's not by no means is it done. Right now we're getting, we're getting writers to, to write it, right? And, uh, and um, so it's, it's, it's moving along. So for the, the release of uh, this new album, yeah. you, you will tour? Yes. Where and uh, we released the album, Ugly Kid Joe, Rad Wings of Destiny, on October 21st. And then the band reconvenes in Europe and the UK, and we tour, like a proper tour to celebrate, to celebrate the, um, the release of the album uh, from October 31st through um, November 24th. And we will roll through Paris, certainly.